Welcome to another episode of my painting tutorials by time lapse with me, the artist, Denis Bouvier. Hey everybody! It's another week already. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So I've got something picked out that I'm going to paint. It's really dark. We're going to do King Joffrey but we're gonna do him dead. Now I remember all throughout that series, right up until the episode he died, all I wanted, I was like, die, die, I hate you. So when he finally did kick the bucket, I was super happy. I thought I would uh, commemorate that moment with a painting. So the painting's rather dark. And if you're squeamish or whatever, I'm sorry, but that's what I'm painting this week, which kind of leads me into what I wanted to talk about. Personal taste. Now, as a painter, there's a part of me that thinks, I want everybody to like what I just painted. But if you're thinking about this, honestly, that is impossible. Not everybody's gonna like what you're doing. So you're better off painting what speaks to you inside of your heart and your emotions. You're better off to do that, and what happens is that there's so many people in this world, you're guaranteed other people are going to look at what you made and they're going to like it. They're going to feel a connection with it. They might feel the same emotions that you felt when you made the painting, or they might even feel something completely different that you didn't expect. And that's the whole thing about art. It's so open for interpretation. So that's what I'm doing this week. I'm painting something that a lot of people are not going to like it because they don't like that sort of super high drama Hollywood dead people and pale skin and blood and all skulls and all that crazy stuff. When I go to museums and galleries and I look at artwork, there's a lot of old paintings out there that were done and they were really gruesome. They were grotesque. There's uh, scenes of wars, battles, death and skulls and, and skulls are something that have been uh, painted in still lives uh, up till this day. It's still a really popular subject matter. So I kind of wanted to capture all those elements today. It can't be all unicorns and rainbows. So if you don't like it, sorry, but if you're into this, let's see what I'm going to do today. Now to start, I'm going to cover my panel board with some acrylic paint. Here, let me show you. This is Golden Acrylics Neutral Gray, number five. Now this is a great color, especially for portraiture. When you're doing portraiture with this stuff, it helps you to define the lightest lights and the darkest darks. Now the number five means that on a value scale, if you have white here and that's 0%, black's 100%, that number five neutral gray, that's 50%. So that's half white, half black. Everything that goes onto that canvas, I'm going to know right away. If it's a light color, it's going to really stand out. And if it's something dark, it's going to also really stand out. And if it's somewhere in the middle, I know it's a little bit on the darker side because it's darker than that 50% gray. And if it's a little bit lighter, but still a mid-tone, then it'll be just slightly lighter than that 50% gray. So it gives you a great sense of feedback for your range of values. So that's what we're gonna start the underpainting with. Now let me show you some of my Winsor Newton paints that I'm gonna to use today. So we got French Ultramarine Blue. This is really powerful and we're gonna use this to tint our skin tones to the bluer side. Yellow Ochre, and I'm going to use this on the crown and some of King Joffrey's outfit today. Raw Umber, and this is a great color for darkening the skin tones. And we've got some Alizarin Crimson. Now this color is very powerful. You don't need a lot of it, and it'll warm up anything you put it with. Now I'm moving on to some Vasari paints. Vasari is my all-time fave. I just really enjoy that uh, smooth texture of the colors and the paints when you're mixing them together. So now we've got pale yellow extra light. This color is what I use instead of white. Uh, I'm not gonna use any white on this painting and I seldom use white on portraits. If I do use a white, I'm using a flake white. I try to stay away from titanium white 
Titanium white is very powerful and it will chalk out the colors you're using and it's very sensitive, so I prefer flake white. The tinting strength for titanium white is 10 times less than it is for flake white. So you'd have to use 10 times more flake white to lighten a color and that sounds like maybe you wouldn't want to do that because you don't want to use too much paint. But when you're trying to attain accuracy in your colors and values, when you have something so powerful, like it's crazy because you can add just a little bit too much and then all of a sudden you got to add more of the color that you want to lighten. And then you end up wasting a lot of paint. So if you go with something like flake white, it just makes sense. Now, this is my favorite color. This is Video Blue Extra Pale. I just love that color. It's so blue, it's so cool. Video Blue Extra Pale, you're so cool. Now we got some uh, Cobalt Green Light, and this is great, not just for making green colors, but I actually use this with reds to lower the intensity of the reds. And we're gonna use some cad red that I'll show you today. And uh, I mix that with that cobalt green light, darkens it right away. It's crazy. This is a Vasari paint color called Bice. It's very similar to King's Blue, except it's less intense. The pigments aren't as powerful. It's just more chill. Bice is, Bice is a chill color. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some old Holland paint colors. Cad red light. This is extremely powerful. You don't need a lot of that. If you just want to warm up your skin tones, you just, you just need a dab of it. Just put a dab, no more than that. Okay, I lied. I don't have any more old Holland colors to show you. This is my Michael Harding Brilliant Pink. This color is awesome. It creates a nice skin tone color. And we're using some uh, really intense blues and pinks and reds today and lighter, yellows because we want to have pale skin. King Joffrey's dead. So we need to show that. We need to represent to the world that things are better now. Now we're going to go into the painting and I'm going to try and teach you some things along the way with the voiceover that I do. And I'll see you after the painting. Now you can see that I'm starting on my piece of panel board that I've coated with my number five neutral gray. You can see I'm mixing ivory black with cad red. Also I'm using bice with some brilliant yellow. These are the two colors that I'm going to use to paint the background and I'm going to lightly sketch everything in with a soft round brush. I'm being careful not to add too much paint all at once. I just want to give everything a nice light sketch and then I can build up color after everything's put down. You can see as the background starts to come to life, it's basically a wall of skulls. I went in with my lights. I'm letting some of the background colors come through and then I'm gonna go in with the darks. I'm not gonna try and cover everything over my gray acrylic underpainting. I want some of that gray to come through. It makes a great mid-tone and it's creating a nice effect. I'm holding my brush loosely in my hand and just feathering the colors on. I want my paint to fall gently off the bristles onto the canvas.
I'm sharing a close-up shot of the background painting for you. I just wanted to give you an idea of the speed and the pace that I actually paint. Sometimes when you're doing a time-lapse video, it can be deceiving to viewers just how long and patient you have to be when creating a piece of art. Take your time, slow and steady wins the race. Now that I have the background done, I'm moving on to King Joffrey. I'm going to start with his crown, mixing a little bit of yellow ochre with some brilliant light extra pale and some other random colors to add some more pigments to add interest. I want to cover the entire area. Be mindful when you're painting. What I find works best is if you work all over. So I'm painting the crown and I don't want to just render it from one end to the other. I want to sort of paint everything all at once and then it kind of comes together at the end. Now the crown's mostly painted. I'm going to move on to Joffrey's face. When painting portraits, there's one really helpful sort of golden rule, you could call it, that most artists follow. And that is called blocking in. Avoid doing any detail work until you have large areas of color covered over your face. Find the general colors and put them where they belong. If you get stuck looking at the details, here's a tip. Squint your eyes when you're looking at your reference material or your model. By squinting your eyes, you're taking everything out of focus and that's when you start to see large general shapes. Those are what you want to capture in the blocking in stage. With the number five neutral gray background, it's really easy to adjust my tonal value of the paints. I know which colors are lighter than 50% gray and I can easily tell which ones are darker than 50% gray. Getting your values right is more important than getting the colors right. Something not all artists know is that it really doesn't matter what colors you're using. If you have the right values, you can use any color you want and the painting is going to make sense to the viewer. If I'm not sure of a tonal value, a trick that I use to double check is I use my camera. I take a photograph of the painting I'm working on and then I convert it to black and white. If the painting still makes sense, then your values are correct. If, when you're looking at it in black and white, some things come out at you, large patches of black or overly bright areas, you can go back into your painting and adjust. If you're working with the light colors, simply add a darker pigment to it or lower the intensity of your color 
with your complementary color. If you're working with reds, add some green. If you're working with blues, add some orange. If you're working with yellow, add some purple and vice versa. If you're not sure about color theory, I recommend going to your local art store and buying a color wheel. Color wheels are great for learning. They can give you all the information you need to sort out what colors are complementary, which colors are your primary colors, and go from there. So I'm painting all the details using a light hatchwork with my Winsor Newton Series 7 Sable Number 1. And I'm working all over the painting I'm thinking about color and making sure I make the painting interesting by adding all sorts of different colors everywhere you look. When everything comes together, things will look really interesting. It's really important to take your time on the finer details of the face. When you're working on the eyes, the nose, the mouth, everyone's face is so different and there are subtle changes in shape and structure that you really want to make sure you capture so that the subject has a likeness to their human form. If you don't capture some of these nuances that everybody has in their own unique face, your subject matter will be less recognizable. I wanted to mention again in this video, I'm mixing liquid with all my paint to increase the drying time. Because I'm making these quick studies to share with you on my YouTube channel, I don't have the luxury of waiting a week for my oil paints to dry. When I use liquid, the paint can become sticky in as short as 45 minutes. It makes it a lot easier to go over areas of a painting that you've already covered in a short amount of time.
Well, all right, that worked out pretty good. That was awesome. It was like, I got to, to kill King Joffrey. It was like, I was reliving that moment of happiness when he finally died. So it was a happy painting for me to do. And now I can relish in that moment anytime I look at that painting. I did have a little bit of trouble right at the end, that black drippy effect that I did. Yeah, because I used wooden panel, the drips acted funny with the paint. They kind of bled into the wood a little bit, but it's abstract. So it, it does look good. I'm happy with it, but I just realized the next time I do that, I'm gonna try and do that on canvas instead of that wood panel that I used. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not really a big drippy on the paintings kind of guy. I like trying different things. And when I learn something, I'm gonna share it with you. That pretty much wraps up my five paintings for the Game of Thrones series. And I really enjoyed it. That first one, Daenerys Targaryen, I really wanted to capture her fiery, personality. Then we painted Jon Snow, his trials and tribulations on the wall, going into the north, the cold, cold air. Then we painted Tyrion Lannister. What was most important about him, his mind. And I wanted to do a close up so you could really feel thinking all the time. And then we painted Arya Stark. Now she had such a untamable personality. And when she was young, she was just so all over the place. And then she grew up and she ended up being a face changing telepath, alpha female warrior. And I think we captured something of that too. Anyway, that's all done with. I'm really looking forward to next week. I've got a great new series to do again. So I hope you're all here. Just a reminder, if you like my videos, don't forget to like them and subscribe. That'll help me to make more videos. I'm the artist Denis Bouvier, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.